Um, so we will start with strings chapter today. Um, I think I will do maybe just a, a just few examples as exercises, but we'll leave uh, cover theory today and then maybe do the exercises when we meet next time. And this week, if everyone wants to like take a stab at the exercises and then discuss next week also, we, we, we could try that. There is a lot to cover in strings. I have hardly worked with them. Um, so this is all new to me. But if you worked with strings and you have used these functions that we talk about here, please, I really welcome your insight. Um, you know, what you find um, more helpful or less helpful or which are like, you know, the must know functions in the this package. Uh, it will be great to have your insight on that. Okay. Um, so, um, starting with basics, uh, we can create strings in R with either a single quote or a double quote. Um, the double quote is recommended for consistency. Um, and if we want to include the single quote or the double quotes literally in the string, like we want to have a string which has these double quotes, um, then we need to use the escape character to escape that special behavior so that R, R sees your the single or double quotes and does not use it as a special uh, character. So uh, here is an example. Uh, so for double, um, for a double quote, um, we would use a backlash backslash here before, before your double quote and then enclose it in the, um, double quote. Um, and for single quote, again, use a backslash. So escape the special nature of any string using a backslash. Um, and write lines is a function that we can use in R to that shows what R sees in that string. So there is this language that we tell R that um, that we type in, but what R sees as a string is different from what we type in the console. Um, so that is using right lines. Um, and if we if we have, uh, call right lines on the single quote, then we can see we typed all this, but what R sees is the single quote. So that works. And again, for double quote, it sees the double quote because we use the backslash. Um, like other, for other uh, forms of um, classes of, um, objects, we can create a character vector using the combine or the C um, call. Um, so here one, two, and three are different string objects and they can be, they are combined in a vector using the C or combine call. Okay, this chapter uses, uh, there are many base R functions for strings, but this chapter is focused on the stringer package. And uh, there are many things to know, many functions to know in the Stringer package, but the chapter focuses on using this regex reference book. So this is artwork from Alison Horst. You may already know her from the R community. She just makes amazing artwork to make uh, things, uh, com complicated concepts accessible. And uh, this is like, you know, this little monster is trying to, uh, trying to find patterns in a string and regex is literally just like this. It's like this reference book that we don't have to learn. We don't have to know everything, but treat it as this reference on um, how to tell R what you want it to see. Um, so uh, basics of using functions in string, all functions start with this prefix str underscore. So that's makes it, that makes it um, easier to look up functions. Like if you try to type str underscore in, cons in the console, all the functions are will list all the functions that are in the string. So you can select from them. First argument is a vector of strings um, and it works with regular expressions. Regular expressions is a concise language for describing patterns of text. Um, okay. Um, this is this is just a table that I created for what I thought could be like a like a reference table for most common functions. Your table may look different from 
my table because depending on what what are the most um, common functions and um, common problems that we are solving using string. So on the left is all the problems that we may encounter and the functions. So you know if we want to, um, there is a typo here, sorry. If we uh, want length of a string, string length, combining strings, string underscore is str underscore c, then converting a letter case to upper or lower, um, trimming white space, detecting a pattern with str underscore detect, um, getting position of a matching matching pattern could be, or getting those exact pattern can be a string underscore subset slash which, and then extracting and replacing um, patterns from a string uh, using string sub, which is for string underscore subset. This is just to give you give an overview of what what all can be done with the stringer um, package. Um, so here is an example of a basic function um, string length str underscore length, um, and like we said, the first uh, first um, object is your character vector, um, and it gives you the length of this. Yeah. A is one, R for data science is 18, and any is any that's that sees that as a missing value. Okay. Um, now another basic function is uh, combining two strings. When you're combining strings, two questions um, to ask first is are you com are we combining two vectors or or is it um, are we combining separate string objects or atomic vectors? Um, and then when we are combining, do we need everything collapsed together or do we need them separated by a separator? Um, so this, if we just use string underscore C and we have, so the first question, is it a vector or a string of objects uh, or string objects? So this here, here we have just separate objects and they can be combined with string underscore C like this. So we have not used any separator here. If we wanted to separate them, um, we could use the argument sep equal to, and then specify this can be comma, uh, vertical line, semicolon, whatever separator you want to use. Uh, now, if we wanted to collapse a vector of strings into a single string, we can use the same function string underscore c and then specify collapse um, here. So that combines all objects of a vector into one string. Okay, uh, so this is the first, I think the first question. And yes, Arnab, did you have a question? Yes, yeah, so is, uh, just to get the last last concept straight i think uh, is it correct to say then that collapse we use collapse when we are working or trying to combine different vectors and separate when we are trying to work with atomic vectors is that how that works mm -mm. no i i maybe i i misspoke the first time if we have a vector um yeah i misspoke if if we have a vector which has different items and then we want to combine the uh, contents of a vector, then we use collapse. So here we have a vector, which is, you know, X, Y, Z is, there is a C there. Uh, so C, X, Y, Z. Uh, so that's a single vector. Then we use collapse. If we have multiple separate objects, so the first example is X, Y, Z, which are not part of a single vector, but they're separate objects, then we, don't use collapse. Is that, does that okay. make sense? Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, this question, um, in code that doesn't use stringer, so in base R, you will often see paste or pay and paste zero. What's the difference between the two function? What stringer function are they equivalent to? How do the functions differ in their handling of any? So what's the difference between the two functions? Um, we can see here in these examples, I have two strings, uh, note and book, 
And if I just use paste, um, paste includes a space by default. When we do paste zero, when we call paste zero on the same objects, uh, it, it does not. So it collapses everything without including any space. So paste zero, I read it as paste zero space. Like that's how I read in my head, paste zero space. So it doesn't include anything. So the um, so this is the same um, same function, um, same action that string underscore C does. So if we don't use any separator, it will by default um, uh, combine the two strings without including um, space. So paste zero is equivalent to string underscore C. However, they are different when handling NA. So string underscore C propagates the NA. So if we have, uh, this, these are out of order a little bit, but if we see the second example here on the right, string underscore C, we have notebook and I've included an NA there. It will see that NA and it will propagate that NA because NA is there, it won't um, work on the um, objects. But base zero sees it as another string. So it will just combine everything. So we have, we have to be careful if we have any and we are using base zero, it will just include that as part of the uh, final string. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is just for us to learn how to use the new, uh, these functions. Use string underscore length and string underscore sub to extract the middle character from a string. What will you do if the string has an even number of characters? So I have a si simple string here, my string A, B, C, D, E. Um, I, want to uh, I want to extract the middle character, which is C. So first we, um, I create um, ST underscore len, which is length of the string. And then we use the length of the string to find out what the midpoint is. And I've just, I've used this, I just used, um, I followed the solutions and this, this is the same thing for a solutions guide for the book. Um, and uh, ceiling, so there are these different functions, floor, ceiling that help you round a number um, below or above. So if my strength link is five and ceiling is uh, midpoint is 2.5, I take the ceiling, so that will round up to three. And then I use that position uh, midpoint in my string underscore sub function. In this, uh, the arguments are first is your vector, uh, your string, my underscore string, and then we have to specify the start and end. Um, here, the start and end are the same of what we are extracting. So that is just the midpoint. And so it will give the uh, character C. It gives the character C. If we had two, if we had even number of characters and we have to decide which one you want to choo choose so you can use floor or ceiling because uh, you'll have two characters in the middle, depending on floor or ceiling, you can extract that. Um, yeah, um, and, and a more elegant function will be like uh, something where you have if then else, like if even do this, if odd do this. Okay. Um, now pattern matching with regular expression. So that's the rest of the chapter and it's a lot of stuff to cover there. Um, um, okay, so to cover some basics first, regular expressions is, is a language that uh, in which we tell R what we are looking for in a string what should R look for in a string? Um, so there are several ways, uh, there can be several problems that we are trying to solve. So for example, we can be looking to match exact strings. So here our example string is um, this string of fruits. So this is, this is a vector of apple, banana, pear, um, and we are looking for, um, and a, a n to appear this pattern a n to appear um, so this is one matching action that we may want to take um, so if we do string underscore view it shows when these matches occur um, and so you know we have this matching exact strings 
Second, we could be looking for, um, we may not know what exact string or, or we may have just several options. We are looking for a pattern. So here, um, say we want to look at A and we want to find any instance where A is between two characters. So when we don't want to specify or we can't specify the two characters, we can just use a dot. The dot means it will match any character except a new line. Um, so, so here we want to see where A is in between two characters. So it says BN here. Um, it's not matching NAN because right now we are uh, there are um, combination there are combinations or complementary functions in stringer um, so if i do string underscore view it just matches first instance if i do string underscore view all it will match all instances yes arnab i had the same question but uh, so string underscore view underscore all does not uh, does not return the second a in banana i was wondering oh really why. okay yeah. Oh, have, I haven't tried it. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought so too, but yeah, I, I tried it. it. It doesn't. Oh, thanks for uh, pointing that out. Okay, so so will it? It's it's not because it is overlapping, is it? Because it won't match overlapping instances. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So that's something that uh, we can look into this week and come back next week to see what. Why it doesn't do that? Thank you for pointing that out, Anna. Yeah, you're right. It's not about overlapping. Oh, sorry. What's that, Molly? Uh, it is because uh, there is no letter. Uh, I think there is no letter on the right hand, no character on the right hand side of the second A, and that's why it is not matching. When we when we are writing dots on the left hand side in string view, when we are writing dot a dot that means uh, it should have characters on both the side of a on the second a in banana there is no character or no letter on the right hand side of a no the, the, the last one i think yeah the, the second a sure. has the second a has the character on the right side the third a does not have anything yes 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 but view all does not okay. return the second character either okay yeah, that's. Uh... Uh, although I think, uh, Minakshi, what you're saying makes sense. I, I changed the spelling of banana a little bit and added a N or whatever character in the end. Okay. So it's, it's recognizing the first and the third A's uh, okay. and it's not recognizing the, sec the, the A in between. Which okay. Kind of, I think it's, it's the overlap thing, I think. Okay. Okay. Which is strange. So. Yeah, let me. That's that's interesting. Let me look into that. And if you, yeah, if you feel like going down the rabbit hole and come up with an explanation, that will be great. <laughs> Next week, yeah. I don't I don't work with strings, so I have actually little motivation other than like yeah, that's interesting <laughs> to go down that path <laughs> until I actually encounter the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> um, but thank you for like stopping me from propagating wrong information. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So I have you looked, I don't know if you've looked at the cheat sheet. I have included the link uh, to cheat, cheat sheet in this presentation and I will share this uh, link. I've not uploaded the presentation yet, but the cheat sheet is super helpful for all these, like, like this, seemingly arbitrary information that you may need any time when you are working with strings. Um, so this is the second page of uh, the Stringer cheat sheet, um, our studio cheat sheet. And here is like, these are the different columns. We'll just walk through that. Um, so if we want to, this is, this is what we want to match. This is the pattern that we are looking for. Um, a dot or an exclamation mark. So these are special characters, so they need special treatment. 
um, this is what the first column, which, which is in pink, this is what we type in R. And when we are typing that in R, this is actually the regular expression, which is the second column. And this is what it matches. So for example, if we look at the first character here in the, um, in the first column, um, we have two, backs, two backslashes and a dot. Um, which is, uh, oh, I didn't explain how to, oh, we did talk about how to explain, sorry. Uh, this, this has, uh, how to escape. This, is, this has been so difficult for me to wrap my head around. So I am going to stumble a little bit as I explain it to you. Um, when we want, um, like I said, when we want to match a single dot literally to R, um, then we have to give, um, um, the dot means something else in regex. Dot, dot means that a special character. But for us to tell regex, don't look at it as a special character, look at it as a string. We have to escape the special character behavior. So that escaping is what the backslash does. So now um, for to or a match a dot literally, we have the regex expression is backslash dot. Now, even, uh, so this is the regex expression, but what we are writing is at, as a string, we are writing not directly the regex, but a string in R. And even in strings, the backslash is used to escape the uh, special character behavior. Um, so once again, for, so that R reads this as this regex, uh, we need to escape the uh, special character behavior of backslash and we'll need to add another um, backslash. So basically these are two levels of interpretation that we are escaping by adding the two backslashes. So in order to for R to match a dot, we have to do two backslashes and dot. For exclamation, two backslashes uh, and exclamation. Um, now there is this, what if we actually want to match the backslash? So if, in order to match the backslash, we need another backslash so that we escape, uh, the escaping happens. But now we have two backslashes that need to be escaped or looked differently at by R as a string. So we, for those two, we need to add two more uh, again, the two backslashes. So this is like, this is like a, I feel like this is a trick question. To escape one, um, to, for R to read one backslash, we need to type this, the four um, backslashes. Um, Can you yeah, repeat so this one more time? I had so much trouble trouble understanding this backslash thing. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. But, but what you said kind of made sense. I, I, I yeah, I, I kind of skipped, skipped a beat, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so like this is this this these are like my notes like that, that can't be justified. It's effort and that's <laughs> um, okay. So to read to read be able to read that backslash, we need to create a regex, which is double backslash. Right. Now the double backslash. Um, if we had just a single backslash here, for us to escape the, for us to write a string, we would have to just do two backslashes in your column, like the leftmost column. But since there are two backslashes that need to be escaped, we need to add the two. Again, basically for each, we are trying to escape the special character behavior of each of these backslashes. That's why we add two more when we are typing the string. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Is that clear? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, and then if, and um, so if we look at the top of the, so this is a whole list for special characters, new line, tab, white space, any digits. So this is a great reference list if this is something you have to use. Um, if you want to work through an example, this example uh, on the rightmost column. So you, we have like this long string, which has all possible combinations of all these special characters. 
And if you look at the top line um, in the cheat sheet is, itself, this function is defined, which is C. So, you know, it's, uh, C is the function and it's basically using the string view all on this long string of uh, ABC, like small letters, capital letters, one, two, three, and all the special characters. So that if, if you're like stuck, if you just work through that, then it will be easier to, um, I guess, un understand what R is seeing. Um, uh, for the word boundaries, is it is it kind of is it right to say that the word boundaries function is identifying or the character is identifying spaces? Uh, oh, yeah. the, the last one. Yeah, actually, I don't know that. I haven't. I don't know what boundaries means. Yeah. Yeah. And that W and D is also very interesting. I did not know that they, so slash W, but when you capitalize that, it looks for non-word characters, which is nice. But another interesting thing is uh, the slash W, when we use mm -hmm. that, it also detects numbers. Oh. Yeah, okay. right? It should ideally not, I mean, word should not include digits, but somehow it is. Yeah, so if, Okay, so it's detecting everything. One, two, yeah. three. Yeah, it it does detect everything. Okay. Yeah, digits plus like letters. Interesting. Okay, so is it is it for like words that may contain? Yeah, like words that may contain A email IDs or something. Email yeah. IDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, that's so interesting. Cool have generation. you used have you used these functions like have you like do you work with strings yes i i uh, so coincidentally the week that i started doing the string r chapter i got work which involved a lot of string manipulation so i've been going crazy with <laughs> what strings. are your what are your strings like like what is the date uh so it's twitter data uh and we are trying to so some of the tasks involved you know parsing Twitter data to uh, identify specific hashtags or uh, specific keywords that might be included in those tweets and kind of filtering based on those keywords. So yeah, yeah, it's very oh, interesting. Wow. <laughs> See, you should like totally help us learn this. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just one week, one, two weeks old into this. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's trial and error. <laughs> Um, so, so far we looked at uh, regular expressions that match a certain range. And what if we had to look at um, patterns that start or end with something? So it's also that it's also called anchor. So our pattern is anchored somewhere either in the beginning or at the end. If we are looking to, for example, if we want to look at um, uh, patterns that start with A, letter A. Um, we can use power. Um, this is this is the regex language. And if we want to uh, look at patterns that end with A, then we can use dollar. And there is a like there is a mnemonic, uh, a helpful mnemonic that it, in the book, which is if you start with power, you end with money, which is weird but if it I, I remember it so I guess it works uh, <laughs> works for me um, so here here are some examples just the same we have the same string apple banana pear and uh, we want to look at uh, words that start with a and so it can find we use the within double quotes we use our a and similarly words that end with a um, we use a with dollar in double quotes um, so remember, when we are ending, the dollar will come after the letter that you're looking for. And when you're using the power, it will come before the letter that you're looking for. Um, OK. Uh, so then there are different character classes I we went through. We saw that in the table. Uh, so slash D matches any digit, slash S matches any white space, uh, space, tab, new line. Um, so, and if we want to look at, um, we want to say, 
uh, we, we want to use logic in this, like match something or something or match anything, but uh, we can use these square brackets. So square brackets ABC means match A, B or C. Um, and if we do power ABC, it matches anything except A, B or C. So it's like complementary. Mm. We can also look for repetitions. So how many times a pattern matches? So if we uh, question mark is um, for zero or one matches, plus is used for one or more matches and star is used for zero or more matches. And all of this stuff, it's like tricky to remember. So the uh, we'll go through the cheat sheet after I finish with the slides so, to see where everything is. And uh, that's just a great reference if we are doing this regularly. Uh, you can all, we can also specify the number of matches precisely. So instead of one or more or zero more, we can be precise. So with that can be specified within curly brackets. So this will be exactly N, N comma is N or more, comma M is at most M and between N and M. So if we want to say between three to six, um, then it will be three comma six within curly brackets. Okay, so, so, so far we saw the regex language. Now we'll see how to use that regex language in actually doing, um, solving our problems uh, using the string functions. So first is matching a particular pattern. And there can be several things that we are looking for when we are looking for pattern, we can be looking for first, whether the pattern exists or not, what is the pattern uh, and like extracting those and which position the patterns are. So one of the, so whether the, pat, the pattern that we are looking for, whether it exists or not, this is again, I've taken this from the cheat sheet. So we are looking for this pink pattern and all these uh, dark pink and the, these light pink are the words and whether we have the pattern or not, we can uh, use string underscore detect um, to see if those patterns exist. So if we are using again our same fruits uh, vectors and we are looking for whether a single letter, whether E exists in any of these words. And if we use string detect, the out, um, it's a true or false, you get a binary output. And we know that this true or false can be you know, summed together and it, because it's seen as zero and one. So that's very useful. Um, if we want to do some, look at some summary. Um, so there is a, oops, I should have, um, I forgot to introduce the words uh, data set. So within Stringer package, there are two, two data sets. Um, words and sentences that are used in the rest of the chapter. So words is just, it's words is a vector of most commonly used words in English and sentences is like another something called Harvard sentences. I think so, I, I don't know what that is. Um, um, so there are just these uh, multiple sentences in the character vector. Um, and so these are the sent, uh, two sets, words and sentences that we are will be using in the examples here. Um, so again, we um, if we want to know how many common words start with T, common words means the words that are in this words data set. So we can just do call sum on string detect words start with remember the power T um, and we have the answer. Um, again, we can use the same uh, to find out what proportion of common words end with a vowel. So vowel, we have the, our five vowels. And remember, we can use square brackets to say A or E or I or O or U, like if they end with anything and use the dollar for the end, um, then yes to that. And we can use call mean on that. So we can do arithmetic operations on all these string detect outputs. Okay, so these are the data sets that we're using. 
Um, now, we can count how many times a pattern um, occurs in a string um, using string underscore count. So again, if we want to say on average, how many vo vowels are there per word in the words data set, um, we can use string count on words in the square brackets for A, I, O, U and do an average. Okay, um, then if we wanted to extract from the strings, um, st extract certain pattern from the strings. So this is an example, this is again the example from the book. Say we want to find all sentences in the sentences data set that have a color. Um, so R doesn't know what color is, we have to tell what color is. So we make a, a first data set with colors, um, called colors. And these are the colors that we are looking for. So this is our, we want to extract, uh, we want to find all sentences that have any of these colors. Um, so we can do, and then we make another column, um, an another object. Um, so remember we talked about using collapse. Uh, so let's combine all the colors here and use separator, um, the vertical line for separator in collapse. So this is our final um, pattern that R is looking to match. Um, and then, so we create another object um, which subs, uh, using string under, uh, underscore subset. So that matches, um, so that matches uh, subsets all the sentences that have any of these color, color underscore match. Um, and then to extract them, we just use string underscore extract, extract um, all the sentence from has underscore color, which have the um, color match. And so this is, this is the final output. So like these are the colors from the sentences that were um, extracted. So note here, yes, hi Arnav. So the first line uh, has underscore color, uh, would it give us the, I mean, does it create like a, binary uh, like true true false kind of a uh oh. vector. okay okay uh, i think it just it creates a subset of sentences that have the color uh actually let let's let's try that because i don't i don't i don't know if i yeah. tried this so, so my, yeah so my question is i mean so i i could follow till the development of that vector color underscore match uh okay question is, would it be possible to kind of identify sentences that have any colors? Oh, yeah. So like which sentences are those? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So let's, let's see. Uh, can you, okay, let me share my R. It will be better to work through this example than actually yeah. walking through it. Um, Can you see my screen? Is it big enough? Yep. Okay. So, sorry, I'm just adjusting windows on my laptop. Okay. All right, so let's do this. We'll make, that's the color match object. Um, if we do has color, has color. Okay. Oh, so nice. This, this is has color. So these nice. are all the sentences. So that's. Um, I feel like this is this was the question. The question was 
find all sentences that have color but then the example goes further i guess to show how to use other like other functions got it but this is so cool yeah <laughs> and then if we do matches then it then it is extracting the our exact pattern so, right yeah it yeah. matches okay good um any questions okay. yeah so uh, like we we discussed um before string underscore extract only extracts the first match um so in all of these sentences if the colors were occurring more than once string underscore extract doesn't um will not show that if we want to do that we have to use string underscore extract underscore all um and again i think we are uh, wondering if what it does to overlapping patterns when overlapping patterns exist um uh, we don't know that yet um okay then and okay um another function is string replace a string underscore str underscore replace so say for uh, in this example if we want to to replace any um replace vowels uh with um with a dash we could use string underscore replace so the um the order of arguments is first your vector then your pattern and then what you are replacing it with um and so this is the output but once again it's just replacing the first instance if we want to replace all the occurrences then we have to use string underscore replace underscore all okay uh we can also split strings so in in, in this in, in using string underscore split and uh, so in our sentences data set uh here we are just uh, extracting the two first two sentences and using string underscore split and we want them to be um within quotes so what is doing is splitting the sentences into words and then um Uh, using quotes around each of the words so this is the first sentence and this is the second sentence split into um each word okay that's it uh we'll just look at the cheat sheet now oops yeah so this is this link takes you here all our studio cheat sheets Oh, I don't think you can see my new window. A minute, please. Okay. so i just wanted to walk you through the cheat sheet if you have not seen this before um this is a it did it what i like it, it what i like is it divides really well the problems that we may be solving so if we want to detect matches these are the functions to use if we want to subset strings these are the functions and options managing lengths mutating um so mutating means replacing or you know changing the case strings to uh, upper to lower or to title case um joining and splitting strings um and helper functions so in helper functions we can see the string underscore view and string underscore view all um yeah and the second page is all about regex and you know there's some theory on the side 
Um, and there's just like the regex can get complicated and complicated depending on what you're looking for. And I, yeah, I, I have not worked through these. Um, and then um, in the bottom here, here is some of the stuff that we covered in the slides. Um, so if you wanted to do like use logic in um, looking for patterns, so A, B slash D is like for or, as we saw square brackets is one of power within square bra brackets of anything uh, is anything but, um, and if you use a dash, it can be used for a range. Um, then anchors, we covered this. Um, there's also lookarounds, like if something is followed by, not followed by, preceded by, not preceded by. So that's how you can look up stuff. And quantifiers. So again, zero or more. This this was also on one of the slides, but it's just this is much easier on the eyes. These examples. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have for today. I will stop sharing. Yeah. Any questions? Any comments? No, actually, I have to read it again. I thought I got it when, when I read it and I'm like, oh, no. This is not what I thought, yeah. So I have to uh, again do this. I, I, hope, I hope I didn't confuse you more, Aditi. No, 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 no not at all. No, 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 no. Um, so, yeah, super well explained. That's a difficult chapter for me too. Yeah. And it's so confusing that backslash and then it should end and only then it'll, oh, so lots to remember and yeah, explore. Yeah. So my goal is to work through the exercises this week to like get a, a little more intuitive, like understanding right now, I have a very superficial <laughs> understanding of this. And maybe we can convene uh, like meet next week and discuss uh, challenges and insights and work through some examples. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do yes. that. Okay. Good. And uh, this chapter also mentions one more book, uh, Mastering Regular Expression. I got that book, uh, but uh, basically it implements a regular expression in some other programming language, and most of them it is implemented in R also in the same manner. It okay. might be helpful, but still I am unable to understand that too, even though it is written in simple language only. But, but thank you for mentioning that, Molik. Uh, we can look it up. And if you want, yeah. I can share it there. Then that will be great. Yeah, if you share it on Slack, that, that will be great. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, everyone.